from Maker Studio, and in this video, I will be showing you how to use the Cricut Maker to engrave aluminum sheets, and we'll also be using the infusible inks from Cricut to color the sheets as well. You'll be able to produce something that looks similar to this. So let's talk through some of the materials we're going to use for this. Uh, we're going to try some of these 4x4 aluminum uh, Cricut brand sheets that uh, look like this. They've got a coating, a protective plastic coating on both sides. Um, we'll use this to try for the engraving. And what we're going to do is use some of the Cricut infusible ink that came out a few months back. Um, and so we will take a sheet like this. This is supposed to be bright teal. The sheet clearly is not bright teal. Uh, but what I've seen is that it will come out quite, quite a bit brighter than this. So I think the first step before we um, put the ink into the aluminum via heat is to cut part of that sheet to be to match the dimensions of the aluminum. I'm not doing a great job here. And this is just a test, so we'll cut that. Uh, and I will go get the uh, Cricut Easy Press and we will move on to trying to uh, infuse the ink into the aluminum and then we'll try the engraving a little bit later. All right, so let's go for this. So I've got a silicone mat down just as a little bit of protection. I have a, a, a tile uh, that will, that actually is perfectly sized for the aluminum. Um, I have the back side or the side that's covered in yellow um, sticky material going to go down, that's the side that we are not going to use. And then uh, it suggested that we preheat the aluminum sheet to uh, 195 degrees Celsius. So I'll put that on there for uh, a little bit. Um, when I pull that off, I'm going to put on the um, infusible ink sheet, uh, color side down on top of that. And then I'm not exactly sure why a piece of butcher paper is going to help in this scenario, but um, that, that will go down on top uh, of the whole stack. It's said to do it at 195 degrees Celsius for 40 seconds, and so that's what we'll try with no pressure. Okay, so it's reached temperature. It is hot. Do a little bit of centering here. There's probably a better way to do this, but we will try it and see what happens. So I'm gonna set the timer going. Shut that off, and I'm going to uh, wait to touch this. So I will check back in with you once I've removed the infusible ink sheet. So it's been a couple minutes. I'm going to take the infusible ink uh, transfer sheet off and uh, given that this is a demo, you can see that we made a couple errors and didn't cut the sheet to cover the full size, but it's pretty good. Uh, and it's got a nice sparkly finish to it. Uh, and it's definitely a, a brilliant teal or bright teal or whatever the, the proper title is. 
And uh, the next step is we will jump on to Design Space and we will try to engrave a design on here. So let's go ahead and get started in Design Space and set this up. The main idea for the project is to engrave a name on the aluminum. And so uh, I'm going to use my daughter's name here. And oops, we'll start with the first part of the name. And then we'll start with the second part of the name. Oops, that is not it. That is. And what I wanted to do was include the Eiffel Tower as to take the place of the L in her name. So I've already uploaded uh, an Eiffel Tower image. I had tried one before that was more of an outline. This is more of a silhouette. And um, I think this is going to work better. So let's select that and insert that. And that's pretty big. Oops. Let's reduce this here. And let's shrink that down because that's way too big. And now we can zoom back in a little bit. I think it's still too big, so let's bring that more into line. So here we are with the... Now that we have the general elements that we want to use, what we will need to do is alter them in a couple different ways to get the outcome the way we want it. So if we think about these as three separate components making up one name or one design, um, right now all of these components are set to cut. And if you see that when we highlight them all and change the line type to engrave, you see that they all become outlines. And while that might look okay, my concern is that there won't be enough difference between the, the base material with just that thin outline. So it won't be as noticeable as if the inside of these objects or uh, letters were, were patterned in some way. And when I initially thought about this, I thought I could use the fill option up here to change that. But as you see, the fill option is grayed out. And so you can't change it in that way. So looking around online, found um, some options for how we might do that. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So uh, right now, we'll leave this as engrave. And um, we'll leave it as the three separate pieces. So the beginning of the name, the Eiffel Tower, and then the end of the name. And what we'll do is we'll duplicate that. We'll duplicate those pieces. And for ease, they sort of move as a single piece. What we're next going to do is upload a pattern. And I will put a link to where uh, we got these patterns from. But I'm going to upload a pattern. You could create any pattern yourself. But this pattern happens to be a a pattern of diagonal lines. And I thought when we originally did this that you need to upload these as pattern fill because I thought that's what we were trying to do. But instead, you need to upload them as images. And then you're going to bring in the image like you typically would. And it will be a big image. So we need to shrink that down. And then we can zoom back in. And I might expand that just a little bit to give it a little bit more uh, sort of white area in between those lines. And, and maybe I'll expand it a little bit more. And so what we want to do is let's send that to the back. And we'll move the elements of the name. Oops. We can do it this way too. We'll sort of get it so that the pattern and the name are um, overlapping. And then what seems to be the best approach is if you highlight, so we still have the three sections of the name. If you highlight 
one section that includes the background pattern and part of the name and select slice. And then we can do that same piece for the front part of the name. But you can only have two objects highlighted at a time to doing, for doing the slicing. And so this is why you need to leave the name in these, different, um, in these separate pieces. So now we've got the Eiffel Tower and the pattern highlighted. OK. And so now we can move away the pattern. And you can see that there's a cool um, outline left of the, um, of the full pattern. We can delete that. And then, even though it looks like it's all together, for um, each of these parts, there's going to be a couple different pieces. And so if we organize them like so, I think that's it. Okay, so right, so there's three different pieces. So that's for the back part of the name. That's for the Eiffel Tower. And then this is for the first part of the name. And if we look, one of these is, looks like those might have gotten switched. I think those go together better. So um, actually, you know what? They might not all be organized in the same way. I thought that they would be, but this pattern seems to have some, some damage or some missing lines in it. So let's delete those pieces. And then I like this pattern in here that isn't as dark as the one up top here. Um, and so let's go with this as the pattern. And you know, just to just to look at it, you can see that it's the elements just like the name was. Um, but the lines themselves have these, uh, this pattern throughout it. And um, what I think we do now is we'll take this, so we'll take the patterned part of the letters and we'll take the, the engraved outline of the letters. And if we highlight those two, we can do some aligning and then the pattern fits pretty well within the outline. And that becomes the first section of the name. And then we'll do the same with the Eiffel Towers. And you could eyeball this, and you actually get some interesting effects if you make the alignment just a little bit off. Um, it gives sort of a shadow effect or a, or a dimensional effect. And that's pretty cool. But for this, I'm just going to do a basic um, alignment so that they all come together. And then we'll do the last part of the name. But I see here that, let me show you, as part of this design, it came out pretty clean, but there's a little piece to this A that's sticking out. It's a little bit like a unicorn horn. And I think I want to delete that just to make, just to make the overall outcome a little bit cleaner. And so, I'm going to show you what to do there. If we leave these two pieces separate and we use the slice idea again, I'm going to create an object, which I think it put on the screen. Yep. And this is the, this is the best way I've found to erase these pieces after you've got them in the um, in design space and sort of before you're uh, before you're about to produce something and so I'm going to create a small little thing that I I sort of think of as an eraser um, and what I want to do is I want to position that in such a way so that I can essentially block out the piece that I want to cut off and so you can see it better here. And if I highlight these two, sometimes I have to reconfigure this a little bit, but if 
I highlight these two and hit slice, then that little nub is gone. And then I can delete those pieces and they're gone. And you can see there's still a little bit of a remnant, but I think it's much cleaner than it was before. And so let's see, this one in the middle is a little bit tiny, but let's see if we can do that again. And let's think about how we would want to do that. So I think I want to create a shape. Let's create another box. We'll have to go back and we'll have to shrink it. So if you're thoughtful about this, there's probably a faster workflow for this. But right now I'm, I'm just winging it, so to speak. And let's zoom back in so that we can try to make sure that we get this right in the right spot here. And again, if I had if I had um, aligned this pattern with the outlines above, then and and I um, and I attached them, then this wouldn't work because that would be trying to trying to um, slice multiple shapes because even though you attach those two they still are considered two different shapes and so let's see if we can do it like so and we'll slice and yeah and it took it away so let's move that away let's highlight that and delete it and now i'm much happier with that it doesn't seem to have those lines there and we can then line up these two pieces and they seem to be pretty good. Oops. And then we're going to attach those. So it's not perfect. There's still a little nub there, but that's fine. That will be a reminder to us that imperfections are okay. And yeah, so now if we zoom out, the design's starting to take shape. And so what we can do here is if we highlight all the pieces and we uh, align with the bottom, then you can see that everything is um, aligned as if it's all going to print on a line, like you might have kids uh, write letters on a line. Um, the Eiffel Tower is still a little big, so I might shrink that a little bit. And you know what? That darkens it. So I'm going to go back and not shrink that and leave it the way it is. And uh, if we do anything, we can shrink them all together. So, and we'll have to do that when we move to the next step where we're scaling it to fit on the, um, the engraved plate. And so, yeah, if we do it all together, then it, it all works um, together where the pattern shifts similarly across all the pieces. So the next thing that we want to do is since we know that we are going to be cutting this pattern onto a certain size piece of material and it needs to fit within that piece, we're going to create a bit of a guide or template so that we can make sure that we are printing within that appropriate space. So we know that these aluminum sheets are four inches by four inches. So let's create a square. And that square comes up, and that is not four inches by four inches. But if we go up here, we can get it to transfer to be that. So we hit four and hit return or enter, and it will create a four by four square. And um, let's change the color of that to white. And we don't need to, you know, we don't need to align things in this um, because we're going to have to shift them in the printing phase anyway. But let's do this. Um, let's send it to the back. And it does make sense to resize 
the object first. So we know that that's four by four. So we know that the name will fit on there. But if we wanted to make it a little bit bigger, let's say, just as an example, move that aside, select this, and let's say we want to make it just a tad bigger. And we can use, so this says 3.6 inches across the top. So let's say we want to get it to about, be more like 3.8. We can stretch it out and let's stop there. So now we know it should still fit within the boundaries. Um, and the spacing looks generally good, although I'm going to bring this in just a smidge. Oh, if I hit the arrow key, it brings it in too much. Okay, so I think that I think that that looks pretty good, and um, so I am not going to uh, attach that. I'm going to leave that as is. I, let me make sure that this this name is attached. So let me highlight this, and let's make sure that that is attached. But I'm not going to attach this guide because you'll see what happens next. So we're ready to go. When we hit make it, we see that it has an engrave uh, board and then, uh, sorry, mat, and then a cut mat for number two here. What we want to do is we want to go to that cut mat and it has the square. And if we click on the square and then click on the three dots, then we can move to another map. Gives us a choice. We'll move it to that first map. And when it's there, what we'll do, because we've aligned the, um, or we will align, because we've aligned the because it's good practice to align any object to a grid uh, when you're trying to do something like this, we'll align the aluminum to uh, the sort of one comma one or one inch by one inch point up here, uh, one inch over and one inch down. And so we'll move that square to be in that position. And then we can move and it, it would be nice if we could find a way to adjust this automatically, like in um, the software, but on this we have to do it manually. But if we find a place within the, um, the box that we like for this, we can position this like this, and that box acts as a guide for us. And so what we can do then is if we click on the box, we can then say hide selected and then it will not cut that um, or try to cut that but it will still mean that our design is in the appropriate position and generally centered within that four by four square of aluminum and so from this point we can hit continue and go through and select the appropriate material select the right cutting blade or engraving blade in this case, and then uh, proceed with the print. So moving on to the etching component, I've got a strong grip mat here, I've got the aluminum piece and I've got it set up at the one inch by one inch um, intersection and I've got the quick swap drive housing there and the engraving tip and then I've got some tape that we'll use to affix the uh, 
aluminum to the to the mat before we engrave. So you can see the outcome here. I had to brush it off a little bit with a, just a, a bristle brush like you might use in the, the kitchen sink. Um, but I think the outcome is quite nice. Um, in the future, you might want to experiment with a different uh, pattern for the text and the etching um, and then also, or the engraving, and um, also in playing with different color combinations and different lengths of time uh, with the infusible ink on the aluminum. But overall, I think it's a pretty nice outcome for a quick test and I uh, hope you will uh, experiment and let us know how it goes.